In today's episode of The Aussie Flipper, I'll take you through five steps I carried out to revive our worst month of selling on eBay. There are a few different things that I'll always do, um, and I'm gonna to talk to you about them right now. We're also back at the flea market to find great items to flip for a profit. Would you go 10 on this? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Everything's gonna to go today. All right. No worries. And Courtney and I break down our top 10 sales from the weekend. We got a $28 sale price for this one. We're set for a long video today, so you may as well grab yourself some listings to work away on while you watch. Enjoy. Carrara Markets, Sunday morning, the sun is out and we're trying to find items to flip for a profit onto eBay. There are a lot of vendors out here, which means there's hopefully going to be a lot of stuff. Let's go. It's only a medium, but I mean, they could win the flag this year. So somebody's probably going to want that. Let's find out. How much are you doing on the Swannies? Oh, no. Um, 20 bucks. 20 for the set. Yeah. What would you do just for the jersey? This one? Yeah. Oh. Done. Done, my man. 10 bucks. No worries, Thank man. you, mate. Appreciate that. How are you, man? You good? Hey, I saw you with a few little duffel bags there. Shoes are in pretty good, Nick. How much on the shoes, mate? 15? Yeah, okay. Pegasus Trail. Would you do two for 20? What? Yeah. That's oh, okay. That's cool? Yeah. Thanks, mate. There you go. Thanks. Much appreciated. These are good shoes. The checkers. <laughs> they are great. What size are they? They're little ones. Little ones. Which is probably the best shoe we'll see at the fleet today, I would have thought. How much on these ones? Four bucks? Let's do it. Here you go, keep five. Oh, thank you. No worries. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. How much on the pops, guys? Um, that one is $90 for the set. 90 for the set? Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is a bit of a bargain. Is it? Yeah. Morning, mate. Hello. How you doing? Very good. That's the way. Oh, my boots. Your boots, are they? Yeah, they're just half a size too small, mate. Oh, are they? I've tried like four times. The last one's only half an hour, and it, anything downhill, it just slides. It's not much because they're an awesome fit, but yeah, it's, it's just too much pressure. Gotcha. How much you got on them? I paid three hundred for them. Did you? Yeah, they're the, they're the best I could find for you know the full ankle support in anaconda right yep and they grip so awesomely they do yeah, yeah. it's good good tread I left love, on them um, yeah it's sad <laughs> they love probably be the best boots i've ever owned wow they're not safety boots of course no they're not um they're, they're not steel tip boots. are they hiking yeah what size are you well i'm a 12. No, these are a 10 and a half yeah well, a little bit tight yeah they're too small for me because what's um small for you. what are you what are you thinking on them though Oh, you're not thinking of yourself. Well, what's a fair price? I know we're at a flea market. I'm trying to downsize, down weight. You know, I reckon $100, one third of new would be very fair. But yeah, at okay. a flea market, so people probably, oh no. Well, I'll, um, you get $100 for a chainsaw. But. Yeah, yeah, it all depends. I'll, um, I'll keep looking around and we'll, we'll see how they go. Oh no. Hello. Oh no. I said I'd never buy hats, and you've got a hat that I want. Oh, really? Yeah. Corduroy and VB. Corduroy and VB. How much on it? Five. Oh, no. I'm going to have to do that. How you been? Yeah, good. Yeah? It's a good day for it today. Oh, it is. I wasn't even, like, last week I was just freezing, setting up, and it's just, it's hot now. Yeah. Winter finished. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be in for it for the next couple of months, I reckon. Yeah, I know. Worth it though, because it brings people down. Mm -hmm. Here he is. How you doing? Legend. You got some shoes? Of course I do. Oh, I love your work. What about these ones? You like them? Yeah. 
cool, right? I nearly have it. It's too big for me. I, I like them. What are you doing them for? Yeah. I don't know what it is. You got 20 on them. 20 on you should go 15 on them? Yeah, for you always. Done. I'll take them off you. Know me. I'll take them. Always give you a deal. You're a good man. He's my favourite. He's my favourite down here. Hi, Matt. How are you going? Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. That's the way. Nice day. Oh, it's amazing. You're going to get a lot of people today. How come you haven't sold the Burks yet? I just put them out, mate. Oh. My lucky day. They're 25, mate. Are they? Yeah. Would you go 20? Yes. All right. I'll do it. 20 for you. Can you just model those for me? Yeah. Just, I just, just want to see what they look like on the camera. <laughs> Here we go. You got a really... What do you reckon? You look like a local speed dealer. A local speed dealer. Cool hat, eh? Got out of hats. I'm, I'm selling it to these guys. To the viewers. Yeah, $30. If anybody wants this, just message me on Instagram. It's a good pickup for 30 bucks. It's a great pickup. Sold February 2023 for 200 Hopefully, oh, fingers crossed. Would you go 10 on this? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Everything's got to go today. Yeah. All right. No worries. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in there. So this is the DVP. SR370. Bought it without doing my research. For $15. And the comps are saying that it sells for We've got a 30 and a 45. So I think we can go 45. Yeah, the good thing is we've got the remote. So that from a shipping sense might cost a medium satchel rate. So it's like gonna be like 10 to 12. So if we go 45, buying it for 15 with 12, that brings it down to 33 fees. I mean, it brings it down to like 28. We might make like 10 bucks. It's not the best thing. And I knew it wasn't gonna be anything more than about 50. I was hoping it was gonna be 50, but that's okay. Now, this is one thing that I've started to grab a lot more of. Dyson vacuum cleaner parts. Anything when you see Dyson, you just, just grab it if it's cheap enough. Like this was only $10. I don't know which it fits, what it fits though. That's the only thing, because there's no like, I was looking, there's no model number or anything on it. It just says Dyson tucked in there. If we go to Google and then we hit this little camera icon here, we can then take a photo of it. Hardwood, it's a hardwood brush. So even just that information alone, if we go back into eBay, we can type in Dyson hardwood vacuum cleaner head. So there's this one here that sold for 50. And that one is actually, if you look at the logo there. So this is the same when you flip it over. You can see. Yeah. We don't have that top little bit. But that one there sold for 50. So I think we could probably get 50 for it. Um, so that's a little bit of a way that we do comp research is we use Google Lens and then that helps us verify what a certain item is that we might not know. Or there might not be a model number, or it could be a shoe that doesn't have any details on the shoe. Um, really handy tool and uh, gives us confidence to be able to go ahead and list that up for about 50. Do you know if this bad boy works? Yeah, it does. It does? Yeah. It's just the DVD player, isn't it? Yeah, I've got another one over there. It's got the, um, it's the old, earlier one. Oh, it's yeah. Have you got it at home or you got it here? No, nah, it's over there. It's, it's jamming the tapes. Oh, it's not working? Yeah. Yeah. How much have you got on that? Oh, a couple of dollars. A couple of bucks. Mm. It works on the DVD, but not on the... Not on the VHS? Not the VHS, yeah. What would you do for the two? 
I think you got 20 on that one. Oh, 10s? Easy. Ten. I'll throw that one in. Done. 10 bucks, can't go wrong. And the DVD was working on the yeah, the, on the JVC? Yep. Yeah. There you go, mate. Much appreciated. No worries. Thanks, heaps. So I'll do some research to see what the value of that one is. It's a digital cinema system TH-A10. I'm gonna put the comps up on screen. That's what we're dealing with for the bottom one. And then we've got the NDT-42 NEC VHS DVD player without a VHS working, so that could be decent as well. But from a sell-through rate perspective, these things sell incredibly well. And it's not that tricky to ship off either. They are heavy though. It's also hot. It's hot. Oh my goodness, come and step outside. Goodness me. Just capture some of this. It is. 20, how, how hot is it? Like 27 or 28 degrees or something? Not a mm -hmm. cloud in the sky. This is winter in Australia, winter. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're cooking in the garage. It feels like January. Oh. When we've got this, we've got this little portable fan. We've just let it sit here for the last few months while it's been, uh, it's been nice. while it's been not cold, but just nice. Uh, and now it's starting to rev up and heat up, which we're still August. Mm -hmm. still, uh, it still should be relatively cold. Um, We've been fighting tooth and nail, guys. I've been working pretty hard uh, from when Courtney left us last Wednesday when we had our feed. That was the last thing that we put in the, in the video. It was us having our, our 30K subscriber lunch. Um, ever since then, I've just been trying to generate some sales for us because as you guys know, if you've been watching these past videos, we've been really battling in the month of August. Uh, and I've got the whiteboard set up with our new numbers here for you guys to have a quick look at. We're averaging $312 a day, and that is in large part thanks to our board game uh, that sold last week, which we vlogged. Um, that went for $500, and that gave us an $1,100 sales day, our best sales day potentially of the year. Um, but then I ran a 20% off sale when sales dipped for the next two days, and we got a $934 day on Saturday, which is gonna be in large part of this video, us showing you guys some of the good sales, the good revenue figures, um, for some of those items that have sold. We've got 40 items to put into the mailbag today, Courtney. Big day. You had a big day of shipping ahead. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're projecting $9,675 to round out the end of the month, which is this Saturday. So we've got to do, we're looking at the numbers, $370 every day in sales uh, to hit our $10,000 goal. Um, so it's not out of the question. And if we do get to 10,000, considering it's been such a slow month, 20% of our volume coming in just two sales days mm. um, has meant that the remaining sales days in the month have been really quiet. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go. We're just gonna work really hard to list up as much as we can this week. Uh, and we're also gonna, in this video, show you guys what you can do if you're not listing up new stock, which you should be doing, but on top of new stock, um, what sort of things can you do with your store to try and get as many sales as you possibly can? There's a bit of a giveaway there. The 20% off sale is one of them. Um, running a promotional sale is always a great way to go about it. But there's a few other little bits and pieces. We're going to talk about it at the end of this video. Um, and another thing, I was saying to Courtney before, um, I was on Facebook Marketplace. I was sitting on the toilet. It's a great time. Perfect. Great time to peruse yeah. Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to be ready to go. That's one tip that I've got for Facebook Marketplace is you've got to be out the door and running when you see an item. And I saw Blue Healers, the complete series box set, $400 DVD, mm. 400 bucks. And they had it listed up for $30. And then in the worst possible way, they just ghosted the messages. It's been four hours now. It's 11 o'clock right now. Um, Seven to 11, I've not heard from this lady. She hasn't marked it as sold. But it's a $30 grab, not far from home, that would convert into three to $400 on eBay. And I just can't get in touch with her. See what, see what the day holds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to pester her. Um, she might be just at work and not checking her messages and she'll see five messages from me bombarding her. Mm -hmm. um, but you got, when you're selling something on Marketplace, you've got to be there ready to communicate. Yeah, but, yeah, but you, 
you're she, not she's decluttering though. She's not like she's not yeah. She's not needing a four hundred dollar sale on eBay to finish her month of August, is she? She's probably inundated as well. She would be inundated, and I don't think we're going to get it. But mm. out of uh, a stroke of luck, if we can, we're going to show it in this video because that is a monster DVD set. Even if it's just information for you guys, Blue Heelers box set DVD, monster money. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was happening this morning as well. So we're going to do ten of our best forty sales. Um, we're going to go from worst like 10th best I should say, 10th um, best to the top and hopefully you guys enjoy the stories that we've got about these items along the way. So out of the 40 sales that we had over the weekend, we did a little breakdown if you're curious to know what sells. This is a breakdown of what we've had. So we've had 4 shoes, 12 video games, 5 books, 12 DVDs, 4 action figures and 3 electronics. Um, so that just kind of shows yeah like what is popular for us um also from a holistic perspective that's pretty much the percentages of how we sell our items normally like video games mm -hmm. always do well and the dvds always do well so this is a very accurate representation of our weekend for what is our annual sales as well mm, yeah. um, so if you're new try and look out for some of those and out of the 12 video games is the 10th best, best. one um is this Tomb Raider PlayStation 1 video game. We got a $28 sale price for this one, and this actually also sold in the 20% off sale that Matt was talking about earlier. Um, I don't know when we got this, where, or where we got this. Mm, I can't remember either. Like what the sale through rate was, but mm. pretty good price. We also, with um, PlayStation 1, if you don't know, we ship these in two boxes with bubble wrap and butcher's paper, just because it's protecting the case. If that was to go into a satchel or an envelope, Anything like landing on that could crack that and mm. would be a refund, obviously. We do like to talk about the shipping process while we don't show it so much in these vlogs. Mm. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, we or if, more so if you're actually you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably heard us harp on this sort of stuff a you know, hundred times over. Yeah. Um, but we do have new viewers. They always want to know how to ship off items and that's a really good point there from Courtney. Um, the PlayStation 1 games always go in a box, but anything else... Like, like this. Like this. doesn't need the protection. You're not going to break that as much as you're going to break that. Um, so we, are, we put them in envelopes, but we put those in boxes. Um, so that's probably just a, a little piece of awareness for anyone new out there. The next one up is Shetland. Shetland on DVD. Now, what I really liked about this when we first found it, it's the complete series one to four of this TV show, but it's in a single case DVD. So that means that we can put that into an envelope and we can ship it off and we can save money as opposed to finding four individual seasons and having to put it into a small satchel. Um, so that was the first thing that I really loved about it. It's only a couple of bucks, but every few dollars saved goes a really long way. Um, we did make a mistake though with this one. And I really wanted to highlight it in this video because it's a very easy mistake that beginners can make too. Um, just on the back here, actually more so than anything, just the, the guidance number there, um, that's normally PG or G or M or whatever the case may be with a DVD. Um, this one here is, um, I think it's European Region 2. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Region 2 DVD only. Um, so that means that if um, it's been played in Australia and you've got a Region 4 player, which most do in Australia, um, this may not play back for the, for the buyer. And we unfortunately listed this uh, DVD up for a Region 4 playback, uh, even though it's Region 2. Um, so really important to make sure you've got the correct stipulation on the back there. Now, what are we going to do about this? Obviously, having just found out about it. Um, good news is we haven't shipped it off yet. Um, so we're going to send a message to this buyer and we're going to just say, hey, we, we noticed we put Region 4 in the title. Um, it is, in fact, Region 2. Do you have a Region 3 DVD player? Um, or are you okay to at least accept this with that understanding? If they say no, then obviously we just issue a full refund. Um, we haven't shipped the item off just yet, so we can just send the item off. We're not losing out on postage. Um, so we're going to do that today and just hold on to the item until we hear back from them. Um, but that's a really important step, guys, with DVDs. But $32 sale price, if it does work out that we can get it to them, um, it's a really good sale. This is the Complete Ben 10 Seasons 1 to 4. Um, a note on this, though, actually, we found two, three, and four out in a thrift one day. We purchased it and we listed it. Um, and then when we got this bulk buy of DVDs that we had been working through, um, Matt actually found the season one that we were missing for this listing. So that was actually perfect. So 
we do that a few times. Like we'll list half of or a partial set of the seasons. And then when you're in the thrift, sometimes you'll find the one that you're needing and then you can amend the listing and then the pricing as well. So that got the sale for a $32 sale price as well. So yeah, that was very, very good. We're going to put that in a small satchel. Um, what are we going to do with all this? Yeah, so we have gone through all of this allocation now. Um, and we just wanted to make a note that most of this is all TV shows and series. So if there's anyone locally out there that views um, our channel that wants to come out and pick this allotment up and then you can do what we've done and go through it all. You might have partial sets at home that there's more in here and you can complete your set. Um, if you want to do that, yeah, send us a message and we can organise collection we're basically just trading dvds and video game sales right now but they are coming in for good money we've got this one here dead or alive six this is a steel case and that's probably the reason why you've got a little bit more money for this one steel cases are a little bit more collectible out there uh, and they can sell for great money just like this one has it was 40 dollars on a 20 percent off sale um, so if my math is correct that is a 50 dollars listing that dropped to 40. Um, so not too bad there uh, we'll put that into an express post envelope get it out the door this was actually a consignment with selwyn um, per the SKU that I had set up. So I'm gonna to have to give Selwyn a bit of a cut out of this. Um, we're going 50-50 uh, on the consignment. There were a few games out of a big bulk buy that Selwyn and I did on consignment. So I've got a record of that on a separate spreadsheet. Um, at the end of the month, I always break down what the 50% splits are. Um, so whatever 50% of this is after fees, postage, cost of goods, GST as well. Uh, well, not cost of goods, but definitely GST. Uh, once all that's taken out, we split the profit 50-50. Consignment, it's a good way to go about grabbing stock. Another DVD set. This is actually a bit of a bundle um, sale because the buyer brought this little Crash Bandicoot thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, with this Bleach DVD set. Um, this was a $58 sale price. Um, thing we wanted to mention with this is the shipping cost. So even though it's coming in at six best for revenue, it's definitely not the six best because the shipping of this gonna go into a box, it's got a bit of weight, it's gonna cost around 15 to 20 at max to ship off, so after fees, post, cost of goods, it's really not that great, but yeah, when you're first starting out, well even not first starting out, shipping is a huge thing to factor in when you're listing up an item, so if it is actually worth it or not, but it's come through, we sold it, can't complain, but good thing to mention. Um, yeah. yeah, I think with the DVDs, if we had these, because this was 20% off sale, yeah, true. We had them priced up quite well at 60 or 70 or whatever it would have been. Mm. Um, and what helps us is we get a little bit, bit of extra money there with that. I think that sold for about 14 or 15 odd dollars, yeah. um, which helps it. But yeah, big postage cost there, guys. Something you guys need to be aware of. Coming in at number five, we have a pair of shoes. Uh, now, guys, if you watched, uh, well, the earlier part of this video, <laughs> um, I found these yesterday at the flea. Uh, the, the Nike Pegasus Trails, I paid $10. I put them on eBay yesterday, the second I got home, because I have a big rule with myself that I don't like to have too much stock worth of a death pile. Uh, Courtney and I pretty much list what we find immediately. And that's what I did yesterday. I came home, I listed these up, and they sold at 3 p.m. yesterday. Uh, so they were on eBay for about 20 odd minutes. Very, very short space of time. Um, that we got a $56 sale price, and they sold on a best offer. I just shot off a 5% best offer instantly like I always do. A lot of people would speak to me about best offers and when to send them off. I actually like to try and catch them when they're hot and I send best offers the second they come in, um, which makes me a little bit obsessive with my mobile phone um, because I'm constantly refreshing to see what's coming in on eBay. Um, but I am catching those best offers when they do come in. Uh, and that is exactly how this one did sell. So we listed it for 60, 5% off, 56, 25 odd dollars, whatever it was worth of the sale price. Um, I think Courtney will be able to get that into a small satchel. Mm. Um, the size is a little bit bigger, but it, it should fit. Um, so that was that was awesome. Um, yeah, I think we only had four, yeah, four shoes sell over the weekend. So to get this one in there at 56 was pretty good. I've actually just got all this stock that we bought yesterday at the flea market down here. And it prompted me to actually have a quick chat about these that I bought. They actually do they are a little bit tight, but they do fit me, these Birkenstocks. So I was umming and ahhing about whether or not I should rock these or not. Now, everybody has had a bit of a crack at me about my Czech Advance, Courtney. Oh, yeah, because of the holes or just the style? I honestly think it was the style. No, nah, they're coming back. I think they're coming back. I think they've yeah. been around for a while. I yeah. like them on feet. My Same. thoughts are to keep them on my feet. And I'm going to probably go and buy a new pair. I'm going to vlog me buying a new pair and just rubbing it into all these viewers that are 70%. What? 
I put a poll up. And 70% said that they were terrible. 30% said that they liked them. So we are heavily outweighed on this, uh, on this sketched... No, nah, no way. On this uh, check it, I should say, Dan situation. Um, however, these Birkenstocks, though, what do we think about these? What if I, like I was them. what if I was to rock Birks? Yeah, Birks, hundred percent, ninety percent of the people would say yes, surely. I think so because I think I see a lot more Birk wearers out there than I do Czech Advance wearers. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I'm trying to conform with whatever what everyone else does. Just have your own style. My question to you guys, though, we're gonna have this is not an Instagram poll, not a community YouTube poll. We're going to make this a comment section poll. I want to really get the conversation flowing around Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks though. What do you think? Socks with Birks. Socks with Birks because I am a socks with Birks. I'm for it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate a sock and a Birk. I used to hate it but now I wear it. Yeah I think it looks cool yeah. and I think a black sock or a white sock with this would, would go hard. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, so Let's get the comments rolling on that for me. See if I'm out, outnumbered on that one as well. This one here, the Nintendo Switch Ring Fit Adventure, I think that says, accessory. So this is just the the band accessory to the Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah, accessories for video games always do really well, especially this comes in its box as well, so that always helps. We've got an eighty dollars sale price for this, so that's that's very very good. Will we put that in another box or just switch this paper for bubble? Oh, it's such a tough one. This is almost the worst shaped item you'd want to try and ship off, I reckon. Very hard to find a box that will fit this mm. um, because a lot of our boxes, as you can see, none of them are to the shape of this, yeah. Um, but it's it's quite light and it could get damaged if we just do the bubble wrap trick. Mm. So I'm confused with this one. Um, yeah. Pizza boxes can sometimes work for things like records. Yeah. I think this one's too wi uh, got too much yeah thickness in it. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have to go to Bunnings and try and find something that's gonna work. I think because I, I do reckon with some bubble wrap, it's gonna need its own separate box. Yeah. Uh, a very very annoying shipping one, but hey, that's your job. I don't have to do that. All right, the remaining two sales were over $100. This one came very, very close to it. We've got some anime, Black Lagoon. There it is right there. Now this is the second and first, so one and two collections. So it's collection one, two, and three of the second set and collection one, two, and three of the first set. So that as a pair uh, was listed up for, no, uh, listed up for 100 and we got a best offer sale of $90. And being six uh, DVDs, we like to put them into a medium satchel. So they'll go into a medium, they'll ship off for about 10 to 11 odd dollars, uh, just some, putting some bu uh, bubble wrap around it. But to get a $90 sale on some DVDs, and we pick these up in a private buy. Um, I think these ones actually came off Aiden, um, that brought in a bunch of DVDs and video games for us in a ridiculously kind deal. He gave us a great price, so the, the cost of goods on this would have been very, very low. Um, you know, less than a dollar each for these. Um, so this would have been maybe $3 worth of cost of good and we've been able to sell it for 90 bucks. Profit margin's massive when you get these bulk buys um, because typically on average you're getting the buy price down because you're buying more. Um, so if you're trying to expand your eBay business, 100%, however you can possibly do it, try and get bulk purchases done, whether it's wholesale, whether it's people that you know, uh, buy as much as you can, drop the price and then spend the time to list it before you buy again. DVDs again. What this are DVDs? is the complete Star Trek Voyager DVD set. Matt got this one out in the thrift last week for thirty-five dollars sale price, um, and we listed this for one hundred. Hundred bucks. And got a hundred in a week, so that was a very good sell-through rate. We just worked it out on the e-profit calculator. So after fees, post, and the cost of this good, we will make thirty-five. So we're doubling our money really fast. Yeah, it's good. $35 in the thrift is a lot of money for a set of DVDs, right? Yeah. But when you know you're going to be able to sell it for $100 per what the comps are telling you, and the fact that there was some pretty decent sell-through rate numbers, I bought this with actually a ton of confidence, and I'm not shocked that this has come through and sold for $100, which has made us $35. Hmm. And I think as a rough number, if you can buy an item for a certain dollar amount, like this as an example, $35, doubling your money, should be a really good number to kind of focus on. Yeah. If you pay $50 on a pair of shoes and you can make $50 profit, I think that's a good buy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I went ahead and bought that for 35 in a thrift, which I think a lot of beginners might look at a $35 buy and run away. Yeah. But to me, I was, I was really excited. I couldn't wait to, sp to spend my money on that. And this one has come in at number one. 
a really nice Lego case with all of these Lego pieces as well. Now I'm probably going to butcher this and they're going to go everywhere. Oh no, there they all are. We're going to have to stage them a little bit nicer when we ship them off. Yeah. We might actually put a bunch of butcher's paper into here as well. Yeah. I think that'll be the way we ship them off. Um, so this Lego set, guys, was found at a flea market that I never recorded. I didn't have the footage. Oh no. So maybe I'm lying. Who knows? If you don't have the footage. Did it happen? Did it even happen? Mm. Am I just fibbing? <laughs> um, no, I did. I bought them at the flea. Uh, I did, I did oh. pay up though. Um, I bought them off a lovely lady at the flea market. If she's watching, thank you very much for this purchase. Uh, I paid $60 and uh, we've sold these. Uh, $60 was these plus a few other little Lego pieces as well that we're doing individually. Um, but these Lego pieces were a set of 17 plus the case and we got $100. Mm. A hundred bucks for some Lego. I'm just actually building this up as we go. Yeah, I'm like waiting for you to drop it. I know, I know. I should probably just stop and focus on what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but no, that was awesome. Lego for a hundred bucks, pretty epic. Um, you know, it's something that I would love to find a whole lot more of because like the Braille set that we sold last week, I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, we, any Lego we find, we sell instantly. Yeah. Um, I'm just very clueless on Lego. I'm not much of a Lego head myself. I don't watch it on TV. You know that one with Hamish Blake? Nah, but uh, I do know of it, yeah. Yeah, well, he's got a good popular TV show, but I'm no Lego man. Yeah. So I haven't seen it, but I know that there's a large... And I think it's the other thing too. When they make TV shows about products, chances are they're going to resell well on eBay, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, make sure you're looking for your Lego. Courtney's going to go ahead and ship all of this off now. She's got 40, 40 sales to do. Mum and Dad gave me this slow cooker. On uh, Friday night, I went over there for a barbecue and I got this as a birthday present. So really nice of them. And I've just been to the shops and I have got all of this for the first slow cooker cook up. I'm gonna be doing curried sausages. And as you can tell, I'm not much of a cook because I've got the Master Foods ready-made packet mix, but that's just the way I operate. Um, so I'm gonna give this a bit of a go now. It's lunchtime. I'm gonna try and have this at 6.30 tonight. So this is gonna be a six and a half hour slow, which is six and a half hours fine, Courtney? Yeah, it should, I'm hoping it's okay. I would have liked to have got this on a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, six and a half hours, there's not a lot of ingredients there to, to cook through. Um, but I'm actually just really looking forward to giving this a bit of a test run. A uh, really nice present from the parents. If anybody's got some slow cooker recipes, um, that'd be basic, but let me know. Because I want to I wanna trial a few different things with this guy. So there's no doubt about it. It's been a really tough month for us selling on eBay. I think at the start of the month, we had about $4,000 and we were tracking about 33% below our normal sales. And when it got that deep, that low at 33%, I knew I had to do something about it and really focus on it for the next couple of weeks. And within a two week period, we've been able to grow that to just a 13% uh, reduction of what we're normally doing. So we are slowly working our way back to hopefully by the end of the week, which is the end of the month, um, break even to what we normally do for a month of sales on eBay. So there are a few different things that I'll always do um, and I'm gonna to talk to you about them right now. And the first one is the end and relist strategy. Now, if you're a seasoned seller, you probably know about this, but this is something that I would normally typically do every one to two weeks. Um, but when I've got slow eBay sales, I like to try and do this daily. Um, and I'll try to really make an important task of mine to go through my existing listings. I amend the price ever so slightly. I double check the title to make sure I'm comfortable with the way the title is structured uh, because title is so important as we know. Uh, and then I will end the listing with a change in price and I'll go up uh, to scheduled uh, listings, uh, not scheduled, I'll go up to ended listings and I will reschedule them and basically put them live back onto the platform. So just that shift in ending and then relisting uh, gives the new item number to the listing and allows the opportunity for it to be sold as a fresh listing rather than an old dormant listing that's just not getting any attention. So the end and relist strategy is a really important one. Uh, make sure you're doing that and when you're having a slow sales period, make sure you're doing it more regularly than often. Um, I will usually only do about 20 or 30 items. I think that's enough. Um, it's not the equivalent of like for like, so I wouldn't go ahead and not list up new stock that day just because you've technically listed 20 new items. Um, unfortunately, they aren't weighted the same. Um, so I almost discredit them as new listings. I just do that process and then continue to list up new stock as well. Um, so that's probably just a little note around that. 
Um, I'll always send and accept best offers, but even more so in this period, I'm more open to accepting offers that are a little bit more of discount than I normally would. Typically, when it comes to offers, I, I try to accept no more than a 10% reduction in price, um, but I'm a little bit more lenient, up to 15 to 20% uh, on offers that come in as well. And like I touched on earlier in the video, I'm accepting and I'm sending these best offers in, in real time, live, straight away. As soon as I'm seeing it, I'm always on that app, refreshing the numbers, um, because you've got to boost your sales. So you've got to be there on the platform, ready and accepting and willing to communicate at all times. So that's definitely a big one you guys need to be sending and accepting, I'm always doing it. Um, the markdown sale that I touched on in this video is obviously a huge process to getting more sales. We put it on for just two days and our first day of sales we got $934, which is three times more in revenue um, than what we typically do on a standard good sales day. We're usually about 350 bucks and then we put a 20% off sale instantly we've got $950. So no matter what anybody says to you, I do think that um, trying to boost your sales with a markdown sale is a really, really good tactic. I just wouldn't put it on for too long. Uh, I'd just do it for a couple of days, take advantage of the sales that come in, and, uh, and then obviously have a, an influx of, of dollars um, to be able to go out and reinvest back into some more stock. So um, that was really effective. It does require you to have a store subscription to be able to run a markdown sale. So if you are on a personal account, um, I definitely recommend that you guys go and grab yourself a store subscription if you're serious about eBay and you've done it now for a little bit and you've got a fair few listings into your store, you think you're gonna continue selling on eBay, I'd go ahead and grab the store subscription. A basic store is all you need. It's about $24.95 a month. Um, so you only have to sell a couple of items and you've been able to get your money back. So if you are getting regular sales and you don't have a business account, grab yourself one. It's a pretty easy step and it's not too much of a cost. Um, the next step that I'll always go and do is I will reprice my items without doing the end and relist strategy. I'll just go into the store and I'll look at the listings and I will just do a cross-reference of what is sold, almost as though I haven't yet bought the item. It might have been in my store for a couple of months and the, pro the market prices may have changed on the item since I listed it up previously. Um, so going in and doing a reflection on what is this item actually selling for and am I priced appropriately uh, is a huge way to grab yourself some more sales by correctly pricing uh, some of your stock. So look, this is a task that could take you quite a while if you've got a number of items in your store, but I like to do at least 20 a day when sales are slow. Um, so I'll just sit there and reflect what I listed, what is sold, and then try and grab that nice low price point, more so medium range to low end, um, just to hopefully try and spike a sale there if I can. Um, so repricing your items is a really powerful tool. And then ultimately, as we know with eBay, this won't come as new information for many, um, but just listing new stock consistently throughout the process of doing those little additional steps, um, that is ultimately the, the highest weighted thing that you could do to generate new sales is to list up good new stock. Uh, and I think a lot of the stuff that we've spoken about in this video, a lot of the sales that you've seen in this video as well, um, stuff we found at the flea market. These were all really good examples of items that can move well. We saw it with the Nike Pegasus Trail 3s that I was able to sell instantly on eBay. Um, it does all come down to the product that you're listing up to help boost your sales as well. So um, look, they are all pretty common things. And if you've sold on eBay for a little bit, you're probably not gonna have seen that as new information, but we do have a lot of new sellers coming to the channel. So I do wanna refresh guys um, that are actively selling for a while, but also the newbies that have no idea about any of this. Um, so hopefully those little five points to boost and fix your slow sales um, can be of good information for you guys. Um, let me know how you're going at the moment. It's been a really tough month for us right now, August. Um, we are sitting on about eight, eight odd thousand dollars in revenue now with a week to go. So if we get a two odd thousand dollar week, um, we're gonna see our $10,000 at least be achieved, which for us, we're always trying to hit 11. So we're only just off course with a $10,000 month, a whole lot better uh, than if we didn't have um, you know, those little steps that I spoke of in place over the last few weeks to resurrect um, what has been a pretty pretty tricky old month. Um, so you've got to be on top of it, guys. You've got to be working really hard on your store as much as it is fun to go out and find the new stuff. I do really recommend that when you're having slow sales to just actually work on the store uh, and get things turning from within uh, as well as obviously trying to find the new stuff as well. You're just going to have to work doubly hard to boost your sales, but I definitely think you can. Um, big video guys, hopefully you've enjoyed it. It was a long one. I'm gonna leave you with another big vlog uh, to go and tune into right here. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so now. Appreciate all of your support. Look forward to seeing you soon.